Hi, this is Daniel Braxton, VP of uh, Efficiency at Presidio, here today to talk to you about how Presidio is surviving and thriving in today's energy landscape. I brought with me my favorite beverage, La Croix. I think that's how you pronounce it, but it's how Presidio keeps me in the building all times and hydrated. So the current energy landscape, let me think about that for one second. There's a lot of ways to answer that. I guess since I have an engineering background, I can speak that a little bit more, but I find that right now with Presidio's business model, maybe it's a little biased by that, but in the past, it's been really technology heavy. So a lot of the innovation that occurred over the past 10, 20 years has been really at the wellhead, the, the drill bit, the reservoir, trying to understand that, get better efficiencies with our uh, development potential. So I spent most of my career kind of looking at different opportunities to get just a little bit better, drill a little bit faster, a little bit deeper, frack a little bit harder to kind of squeeze more, more juice out of that lemon. But certainly in the past 10 years, that's really where all the focus was. And so in that competitive race to get the next biggest asset, to drill deeper, to drill faster, to frack harder, so much technology innovation that went into it. And I think now at this point within our current landscape is really we're in the harvesting mode. So we're trying to harvest the value. So Presidio does a really good job of being kind of efficient as far as an ongoing operation and making sure that we're cutting costs. So I think that's going on throughout the whole industry. I think a lot of operators where we used to spend millions and millions of dollars on sort of exploration and you know just trying to get a little bit better at something that we could scale to thousands more wells, we've done that pretty good. So why is the energy landscape changing so much? Certainly historically, certainly my 20 years of an industry, it's been really technology focused. And so that technology has allowed the companies to really explore further and further and get deeper and deeper, frack harder and harder and get more and more out of the reservoir with kind of less money. I think we've done a great job of really harnessing all the innovation that's occurred and it's really well distributed throughout all the companies and operators have access to it. And so at this point, it's changed in such that now there's not as much of a competitive race to get just a little bit better, a little bit better and really you know, be competitive at the margins. And so companies like Presidio can come in and provide a very niche expertise to optimize a certain you know, aspect of the industry. It changed so much now that we're, we're competing with other energy opportunities. We're kind of in an energy ecosystem where it's not just oil and gas. A big part of it is obviously pricing volatility and uncertainty. And so at this point, companies really have a hard time, you know, investing a billion dollars or something that might pay out in 10 years. And so there's a little bit more risk to do that. And so we have to find a value short term and create value medium, medium term and plan for the long term. And so to do that, we can't simply just think about the reservoir and how to get better at drilling and get a little bit more out of that turnip. We really have to be innovative and think about other parts of the value chain within the energy industry. So what kind of company is Presidio? Really, it's a, it's a modern energy company. And so we recognize that we really specialize in oil and gas and sort of the cultivation of the, the value associated with that. But every day we're looking for different opportunities in all around the value chain. And so in, in that sense, we're not just oil and gas. We have a lot of experts associated with reservoir and drilling and completions production because that's our core competency right now. It's really made kind of the the wells and the prolific production we get out of some of the wells that were just a you know pipe dream 20 years ago. What Presidio can do is actually kind of pull in our tail end expertise for managing that and managing costs and understanding the long-term prospects of these assets and plan for a sustainable uh, a production profile. So it's, you know, specialized projects. As talented as our staff is, a lot of times those things are done because you have experts who've done that for 20, 30 years. Well, those experts are still out there and they're happy to work with Presidio. And so we have a core team here who can manage the process extremely well and innovate on the idea side and bring in the experts to really execute kind of the detail side. So Presidio fits in really well from being able to harvest the value and then also be nimble enough to go and create the, the innovation that, that uh, is necessary. When we started Presidio, we looked at the world landscape in investing in upstream oil and gas, and we saw that about 95% of the capital that investors were investing were all investing in these development projects. And so they were all buying undeveloped acreage and spending money to acquire that acreage and then spending even more money to go develop that acreage. And almost 100% of capital in the entire industry was dedicated towards doing that. You know, why were people doing that? What was the thesis there? I think the thesis was shale had moved to a manufacturing phase where the results were going to be more normally distributed, where it was a much more consistent and stable way of developing an oil and gas resource than what we've done previously. And that people felt very comfortable investing large amounts in the development of those properties and the infrastructure in those properties and the long takeaway and you know downstream and how to refine those properties. And I think there was a major shift in people's thinking that I think turned out to be very, very wrong. Typically, people are focused on the rock, the assets. It's an asset heavy industry. And we were focused on how do we develop a culture that enables us to find better opportunities than other people. 
I mean, our business strategy and going back to the contrarian thinking, and we can talk about, you know, what the world was like in 2016 when we were putting this idea together. Again, we had 95% of capital that were going into these more venture type projects. And we have 5% of the capital going to go buy existing producing properties. And so just on the face of it, I would say to myself, okay, the companies, for instance, back in 2016, who were publicly traded, who were you know, able to issue equity to go acquire acreage, they were trading at 20 times uh, enterprise value to EBITDA. Whereas I could go and buy an existing producing cash flowing property for two to three times EBITDA. So just from a value investor standpoint, which you know we very much view ourselves as value investors, we are very aligned with Howard Marx's philosophy that it's not what you buy, it's what you pay for it. So Will and I met back in, let me get my dates right, in 2012, we were merging two companies. Will worked for a company named Atlas Energy and I worked for a company called Titan Operating. We merged the two companies together that year. That their, uh, Atlas was looking for an operating team and that's kind of what Titan was. Uh, we had some assets here in the Barnett, but um, we're looking at, at, at doing something. So Will and I met, and I like to make the joke that we we sat across the table from each other negotiating a deal pretty intensely against each other. And very quickly, we were sitting on the same side of the table once we got the deal done and we were doing deals. I was only at Atlas for about six months before I left to go back to the private equity company that I was working with before. But in that time that I was there, Will and I did almost half a billion dollars in transactions together. So the simple business model back then was buy from the big guys because they're really bad at operating and you can do better than that so you can create value there. And then buy in areas where there's a lot of hydrocarbons, a lot of hydrocarbon column, and technology will figure out a way to unlock that. So it's not a lot different here. Uh, that's kind of what we've done. You know, the idea of we come behind a, a, a company that's been focused on something that we're not. Most of the time that's drilling and completing wells. They've come in, they've drilled a lot of wells. There's a lot of energy involved in that. There's a lot of capital involved in that. There's a lot of uh, dollars from a GNA perspective to manage that process. So the idea of managing a well after it's drilled and completed and optimizing that and using technology to really unlock the value of getting the most out of the margin just wasn't a focus on. Uh, just different business models where, you know, again, five years ago when we came up with this idea, it was completely contrarian. It's not as contrarian anymore. There's more people doing it now. I still like to think we're the we're the best we're the best at it i'd say we were ahead of our time will and i know a lot of people we know a lot of the same people um the world of, of energy finance isn't that large so the energy landscape is uh is uncertain i mean it feels like it's uncertain every year for the past 50 years but right now it's kind of a it, it feels like a an inflection point. Presidio can kind of sit in there because we have created sort of a niche where we're not just the absolute experts on the petrophysics and the rock. We realize there's a value associated all along the energy spectrum. And so we position ourselves to be really good at this very narrow thing that we've created a lot of value at. And so at this point, we're, we're trying to exploit other business opportunities, business lines that are adjacent to energy, but also maybe compete with energy and realizing that everyone here is incentivized to find that and, and create that and explore that those opportunities to kind of create a sustainable company. And, and also kind of realizing that, that actually drives a large successful company in the energy industry actually drives it, the industry itself. So we think we're leaders in that front. We think that we can find other opportunities that aren't simply drilling, frack, produce, sell, but think a little bit more deeply about what other opportunities might lie beyond the will bit, the wellhead. To back up our plans for the future, what we've been doing is really setting the foundation for a long time. For three years now, we've been doing that. So even though we've been buying assets and optimizing them and we've gotten really good at that, the entire time we've been sprinkling kind of kind of more minor innovations along the way to get the team really excited about realizing they might not be doing what they're doing in one year today it might be totally different so some of the obstacles to really become the future energy company like we want to be is really kind of the, the team that we've had to build here is getting folks to sort of appreciate that this is different the obstacles when people come in and really exceed at what they're doing and do really well to realize that then they have to do something else and it may not just be getting you know more technical more talented smarter but adjacent and kind of look at their, their entire domain and think about kind of where in that domain can they add value, can they, can they innovate, and they, can they create something new. And so most, most people who come to oil and gas company, it's pretty well-worn pattern for what you do, but here it's really different. It's a horizon planning. It's, it's really planning for the future. So we have, to, we have to succeed now, 
We have to be able to, you know, create value immediately, short term, and understand that that we have a short, medium, long term opportunity. But but we need the team to really appreciate really what the opportunity is in a year or two to really indoctrinate kind of the idea of innovating outside of the wellhead. Well, obviously, some challenges and concerns in the industry is you know, regulatory, and I think that that's a very dynamic kind of world where we try to anticipate what might be happening. Some oftentimes. We opt not to do something because of concern that there may be some some limitations for our ability to execute that, and so, but we still have to move forward. We have a young staff, and they're advanced in that regard. So we'll build our own tools to assist us in in evaluating, you know, again how we're doing. You know, a quick, tight feedback loop of the things that we measure, and so that that is absolutely tech forward and tech driven. How does gas prices going up affect the city? Certainly means that that we produce a product that is more valuable. However, we're conservative financially. We we hedge a lot of natural gas, and so as the commodity price increases, we have hedges that are out of the money for us that we have to pay each month. So there's a muted benefit from from a profit perspective on an upswing in prices, and in some ways, it can be something of a challenge for us because we do see. Um, some of our input costs, some some upward pressure on our input costs from vendors. You know,、um, more wells getting drilled. That means that there's more demand for for services and prices go up. So we have to mitigate that, and we do. We try to work with our vendors for you know long term plans with them that that makes sense for them, makes sense for us, that we can stabilize our costs. And then of course on the acquisition front,、um, if prices are higher, that means the the price that we're going to pay for assets is higher, and that's okay. That's all right. We underwrite that. We know what we're doing there, and and that's all that's all okay at the end of the day. But it's probably always a little bit more helpful to have stable prices, whether they're high or they're low. It just lets us predict with a little more certainty what we think is going to happen in the future on prices, which helps us underwrite the asset a little a little more easily. So Shea Province is a he's got a background in the field, and we brought him into the actual the office in Fort Worth as an engineering tech. He had a, gr- a strong background. We find that you know people who have worked in the field, they actually offer the most value in the office.、Uh, they speak the language. There's not the disconnect between trust. Shea was embedded in the field at one point, and him working in the office would be a great liaison for、uh, the field activity and the, and the office activity. So he worked as an engineering tech for I don't know, probably a month.、Um, and in that time, we were actually trying to interview a engineer. We had a, a position open for an engineer. Shea's background is in engineering. He has a degree in business administration, but spent most of his time working in the field as a pumper, as a roustabout. Kind of came up the ranks through there. When he came on as an engineering tech, he was just so talented. Like he's just a go-getter. He had a great insight into the field itself, the property, and the assets, and the wells. And he just came. He became kind of the go-to guy for us. And so, in a lot of the engineering functions, Shea had activity and experience in the field, so he was just extremely useful for understanding the asset and accelerating our understanding of the opportunities out there.、Uh, at that time, we were looking for an engineer. We saw an open position to try to fill out the team that we had sort of structured originally, and just noticed that Shea's just ambition was really high. He was really smart. His technical competency is as high as any engineer with a degree.、Uh, just his his activity in the field, and to be truthful, that's probably how most folks in the field are. Uh, despite a degree, they kind of know everything they need to know to get it done. The oil and gas industry has a rich history, and so I think that people we hire are, are obviously familiar with that the legacy of oil and gas, and they value that, and that's why they're here.、Uh, there's something about oil and gas, whether it's、uh, you know parentage or the geography they grew up in, or just their technical、uh, interest that has drawn them to oil and gas. Timeline-wise, we have a, we have a few projects in the hopper. One, our sort of、uh, interest in helping mine Bitcoin using kind of whether it's excess gas or sort of unused energy to mine that. We think that we have a we have a plan in place, and we'll probably be doing that early 2023. Also, kind of new to new to Presidio is actually you know drilling, completing wells, and so we're moving forward with that. We anticipate being busy early 2023. Also, so this you know the second half of the year is going to be booked with us really kind of、uh, hitting the gas pedal and trying to make this happen.